everybody! What is up? I hope you are all having the best week in the whole wide world. Are you guys excited? Because today's Q&A is going to be so good, so good, so good. There were so many amazing questions and themes running through this week's Q&A. Okay, wait, hold up guys. If you are new to the Ask Kimberly Q&A format, we do them every single Friday now. What I do is I put a post on social media every week and you guys ask your dating, relationship, personal questions for me, whatever floats your boat. And in a YouTube video every single Friday, we are dishing the dirt right here, you guys. Before we get into today's questions, if you are new to Ask Kimberly, guys, join the family. Welcome to the family. We are so happy to have you here. Everybody is so nice and welcoming and is so open to relationship discussions. And make sure you are following me on Instagram and other social media so that you don't miss the next Q&A. Are you guys ready for question number one? <laughs> I'm so excited this week. I'm so ready. Are you guys ready? There are some really, really good questions. Really good. So question number one, I should say like theme number one. You guys are bringing it with these types of questions this week. Number one is from Lulu Katarina. She says, hey, so I'm 17 and I like my teacher a lot and I know it's illegal, but I can't get over him. I mean, in one year I'm done with school. Please help me. How can I stop it? Or how can I get him to like me too? Sometimes he also does some nice eye contact or tells me something nice. Okay, so it's not just Lulu. It is also Mirna, she says, hi Kimberly, I just want to know what are your thoughts on a girl being 16 and talking to an 18 year old? Is it wrong? We've liked each other for about a year now and we haven't done anything sexual. Thank you. Thank you. And also at SarahK157 says, is it okay to date a guy that is three years older? Love you so much. Those were not the only questions about this topic. Clearly this week there's a theme about curiosity about dating somebody older. I am going to give you my take. First and foremost, it is totally, totally normal to have a crush on somebody older who you admire, whether whether it's like a person who's a few years older than you in school, an older colleague, or even a teacher. And I am not immune to this. I once had a huge crush on one of my professors in university. So yes, it is totally normal. We have all been there before. Having a crush is really just being able to admire the beauty of someone else, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you have a crush on a teacher, it could be because you think they're really smart, or caring, or just like a great person. I think it's even more common to have a crush on somebody who's older, because sometimes it can feel like they are more confident, like they have their lives figured out and it's easy to kind of look up to someone and admire that but when it comes to dating these types of gaps can cause some problems especially when you're in your younger years we have all seen pretty little liars and maybe even Dawson's Creek we know that teacher student relationships are like a no-go guys they're bad stay out of those relationships there's a huge power differential and even if this somehow happened it could result in huge emotional trauma for you the difference to me between 16 and 18 isn't as bad but then you also have to consider the laws in each country and also that when you're in your teen years your brains are still developing so somebody who's 18 might have different curiosities and expectations out of a relationship than someone who is 16. Just be mindful that if you are in a love situation with someone who's a little bit older than you that you need to feel comfortable enough to say no if an uncomfortable situation comes up because there's a chance you guys are going to be a little bit mismatched when it comes to your actual readiness to progress things forward in the relationship and that is totally normal and okay as long as you're with a supportive partner. The key to dating anybody older is to have the confidence to say no if you need to. All right, you guys, on to question two is from Beauty by Danny Slay. I love your name, it's amazing. She says, at Kimberly Moffat, your goals. So, oh, thank you. So how often do you work out and what's your opinion on calorie counting? I love you, Kim, hashtag Ask Kimberly. Okay, I chose this question because I thought that it was really important to discuss dieting and calorie counting and all of that stuff like exercise and everything because this has played a huge role in my life because I used to be very insecure about my body and I spent a large part of my life thinking that I was far too big and I really don't want that to happen to you guys so I do not believe in diets I do not believe in calorie counting unless this is something for some reason that is recommended to you by your physician or by a healthcare professional and I also think that exercise is something that yes is healthy but should be done in moderation and a style of exercise that feels good for you and your own personality and lifestyle I really 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 want you guys to hear this it has been nearly four years since I have done regular exercise for me exercise is not about getting a better body or like looking better in clothes or something. It's a lot more about like mental health and feeling good. And for me, yoga and low intensity exercise is like a really good chance to just unwind and like feel, feel really, really good from the inside. So when I do exercise, it is always in that context. I am totally, totally convinced that everybody has like kind of like a set body or a body type that they're kind of born with. Because I know for me, it doesn't matter how much I've ever dieted or exercised. I have always looked relatively the same. To me, I think like the difference of five or 10 pounds is not worth like the obsession over calorie counting and obsessive exercising. It's just not. For me at 
the age of 34, I want to tell you guys, like, it's so important to just love the skin you're in, like, love the body that you have, and don't freak out and don't obsess over it because the body you've been given is probably, like, the same shape that you're going to be for the majority of your life. So it's going to save you so much time and heartache to just accept that now and start loving yourself from the inside out because it's so important and hopefully you guys will feel so, so, so good if you do that. All right, guys, on to question three. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have your name. I'm so, so sorry. This is from somebody. If you can figure out who you are, definitely leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know who you are. Is it okay to want to experiment with someone of the opposite gender without claiming an LGBT label? Love you and your work. Okay. Um, yes, 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 absolutely. Everyone has 100% permission to experiment sexually, emotionally, physically, spiritually with any gender. I believe that sexuality is fluid and that we're constantly discovering different parts of our sexuality as we get older and as we mature. So some people feel very strongly that they fit into one category while other people feel like they're a little bit more fluid for their lives and that's totally, totally fine. In my practice, I have even seen individuals who identify very strongly as one sexuality experiment outside of that sexuality just for fun or just because they enjoy that life experience. Honestly, guys, I'd say as long as you're safe, as long as this is something that you feel emotionally ready to do and you're comfortable with, then there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Your body is your body and there is no need to feel like you need to put a label on yourself before you are absolutely positively ready. And even if at some point you land on a label for yourself, it is totally okay to ditch that label if you so choose. So your sexuality is your decision and your decision alone. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so question four, and oh my gosh, I forgot again to put the name. You guys, you guys need to help me, okay? When you submit questions on Snapchat, which you always do, if you can like put, like draw your name so I know who you are, because when I take a screenshot, it doesn't save your name. It just shows me a picture that you submitted. I would humbly appreciate it. He or she says, hey Kim, I love your videos and I've watched all of them all. Please answer my question. What is your opinion on waiting until you are married? That is such a good question. Guys, the decision to wait until you are married, and I'm assuming you're, you mean until you have sex or have intercourse, that's like a completely personal decision. And I've watched people make that decision for various reasons, you know, whether it be religious or just personal. I've watched people not make that decision. And either way, it's totally, totally fine. It's, it's all about whatever you think is gonna work for you and what you feel comfortable with in your life. There is some research that actually shows that marriages can be more successful if you don't live together before marriage, but I have seen countless examples of lots of different couples who have been successful, some who waited until they were married to live together and sleep together and all of that other stuff, and some who did not. So my opinion on this is honestly just to do whatever you feel is right for you. And if you feel really strongly about this, hopefully if you can communicate this to your partner that this is what you really want, I think if they truly love you, if they are truly committed to you, they will stick around despite having this information and it should not hold your relationship back if it is the right person. So definitely don't feel any pressure to change your mind if this is something that you truly want. But that being said, it is really important, I think, to understand the reasons behind why you want this. If this is coming from a place of fear, like you think they're gonna leave you after you have sex, or if you're just afraid of that in general and it's gonna be the same way after you get married, I think it's also important to confront the rationale just so that you know that even once you do get married and you actually go through that process, that it is still going to be a positive one for you. Question number five. I don't know your name as well, but you are so cute. Thank you so much. I love my LGBTQ subscriber. She says, hi, Kimberly. My name is Amy and I'm bisexual. I have been finding it hard to find out if my girl crush likes me back or if she is just being a good friend. Do you have any tips on how I might know if she likes me? Thank you so much. This can be especially confusing in queer relationships because there are a whole bunch of factors to consider. Like you might not know if your crush is into your gender first and foremost, but even if they are, it might be hard to determine if what they're doing is just like signs of a great friend or good friendship or if they're interested in you romantically. So if you are in this situation and you wanna know if your crush likes you like more than just like what a good friend would like you, try to see if they take the conversation into like a relationshipy or intimate direction. Somebody who is just a friend is going to stick to conversations that are not even remotely intimate or sexual, it's always going to be like political or intellectual and like staying on one level. But someone who's interested in you romantically is probably gonna start to turn up the heat with questions about your relationships and even your sexuality. So for 
For example, they might ask you if you like someone, they might ask you when the last time you kissed someone was, they might ask you who your celebrity crush is, you see where this is going, like they want to kind of get into your head to see how you feel about them. The other thing is that they might try to isolate you, so instead of wanting to hang out with you in a group scenario, they're always wanting to do things like as one-on-one -on -one friends, if you know what I mean. So these could be clues, but I also just put out a video on Tuesday about almost this exact topic, so definitely go check that out right now, I will link it right here. Okay you guys, the next question is from Zia Sykes 25 she says, Hi Kimberly, first off, I'd like to say I love your videos and your channel, thank you so much. My question is, do you have any advice on how to feel more confident with your body when you have your first time with someone? Okay Zia, you're bringing it with this question because I feel like this is something that a lot of people ask, especially my DMs. If you are still not feeling confident about your body with this person, to me, I really, really, really want you to question if you are ready to go down that path with this person. If you are with the right person and you guys are ready to take that step into intimacy land, they should be helping you feel so comfortable with your body that intimacy is just like the next step. It shouldn't be so awkward for you that you're constantly thinking about your body because that is going to be a very awkward and uncomfortable position for you to be in if you do go down that road. So that's not to say that the other person is going to like erase your body image issues completely but when you get into that intimate scenario the feeling between you should be so connected that your focus isn't really on your body anyway so my best advice honestly for this one is to just feel like you have a strong enough connection with your partner and that you guys like trust each other completely and these issues with your body should kind of fade to the background so the focus should be on your relationship itself and I have even seen examples of people who in the right environment can actually learn to love their body through intimacy because they see how much their partner worships their body and that's like a huge confident boost for just about anybody. So always make sure you are with a partner who like really really loves you but also thinks of you as somebody who's like really attractive and is just like totally excited by the thought of you and your body. And honestly guys if your partner does not make you feel that way like I think that you need to really take a close look at who your partner is and if that relationship could be deepened or if you need to find yourself a new partner. Okay guys, question seven. She is from, question seven is from Jasmine Sunny Day. She says, hi, my name is Jasmine and I'm a big, bleh. question seven is from Jasmine Sunny Day and she says, hi, my name is Jasmine and I'm a big fan of yours. Yes, I sent this message before I saw you were doing a question and answer. Oh, how sweet. I am the kind of girl that boys don't like. I wear glasses, I am not pretty and I'm fat. Jasmine. I really like this guy, but I have no chance. Do you have any advice? Love you so much. It'd make my life if I was in your video, okay? You are like the sweetest person in the whole world, and I have something to say to this in just a minute, but we had other questions that were exactly like this, which was deeply concerning to me, and which made me know that body was like a huge part of today's theme. I feel like I'm not cute or pretty enough to get a guy to like me. What are some good tips on feeling prettier? Ask Kimberly. Bailey W8 says, hey Kimberly, I'm a bigger girl, and no guys have ever been attracted to me. Am I doing something wrong? I love your video so much. These are just a few examples of you guys who feel like your body or you are not good enough to get another person. I know it's all to varying degrees. First and foremost, you guys, everybody has beauty. It doesn't matter who you are or what you feel like you look like on the outside. Everybody has beautiful qualities, but and there are actually many people in the world who will love you just as you are, okay? So it doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter the color of your hair. It doesn't even matter your personality because every Everybody's personality is different and unique and that is not to sound cheesy guys it is just so true beauty in my opinion is a lot about perception so how do you perceive yourself and how do others perceive you as a result and a lot of that comes from inside like what you're projecting to the world so if you feel like you are ugly and overweight like for sure you're going to be projecting that into the world and other people are not going to look at you as positively I told you guys before that I spent a lot of my life worrying that I wasn't good enough and and I know that when you feel that way you are putting out energy that tells other people that you're not good enough. You're like almost teaching the world how to treat you. You're teaching other people how to see you. I think like it wasn't until I got a little bit older and got a lot more confident in who I was and all of the cool things and unique things about me that other people started to treat me in the same way. And from there, it just becomes a bit of a cycle. So I'd say honestly, before thinking about a relationship or dating, if you truly feel like you aren't good enough, this is something that has to come from within. I would strongly recommend taking some time out just for yourself to focus on your own health and well-being and happiness. 
yes because that is way more important than any relationship first and foremost but also when you get into that place where you are truly happy I think you are going to attract a partner who actually treats you with respect and appreciates you for all that you are guys the most important relationship in your life is the one that you have with yourself it is it actually is so please start by loving yourself because you deserve love you deserve it a thousand million percent you deserve it but it has to come from you you deserve that love from yourself first okay you guys all right you guys question eight this one's so cute it's from Hannah she says hi so I have a problem I don't know how to flirt no guys that I have ever had a crush on has ever liked me back or asked me out and my friends and I think it's because I can't flirt this is not the first time I have heard something like this Hannah like so many of you have this question when I try to it ends up being really really awkward how do people flirt thanks also I love your channel so I have a really good tip for this one you guys have all seen my like flirting hacks and flirting tricks videos and those are all well and good I completely support the tips that I've given you guys in terms of flirting however sometimes if you interpret that as just like doing the move it can totally come across as awkward right like if you're not in a flirting mindset if you're not in like a sexy mindset and you try to do a flirting move it can be really really weird it can like have you guys ever ended up in a situation like what that was like that where you try to like do the bend and snap and you're like or you try to do like the eyebrow fashion and you end up being super creepy like <laughs> or what else or like you try to what's another flirting move that we talk about all the time or maybe you try to give someone like a come hither stare but it ends up looking like you're just like super super creepy or maybe you try to run your fingers through your hair but like it just like ends up looking very strange and you're not attracting any attention in a positive way so I would say if this is how flirting techniques make you feel get rid of the techniques for now and just practice getting into a flirtatious mindset okay and you can practice this with just about anyone it doesn't just have to be your crush. A flirtatious mindset is one where you are kind of a little bit sly, you feel very sexy, you feel like, you know, you feel super confident, and you feel like you are ready to have some fun. Like it's a little bit of like a sneaky kind of fun, okay? If you can get into this mindset before you talk to someone or before you like go to a party or something, you're going to find yourself naturally being flirtatious or flirting without even having any of like the moves in your head, okay? If you are feeling a little bit sneaky or like ready to have some fun like what might you do you might be drinking from like a, one of those plastic cups at a party and you might like gently bite on the cup a little bit because you're feeling a little bit sneaky and adventurous like that might happen naturally if you're kind of in that mindset where your inhibitions are lowered you might actually be more playful with somebody just because you feel confident and like it's not as important to just like get the move just right so next time you have the opportunity try getting into this mindset before you actually flirt and see how that goes so question nine, I don't know your name again. I'm so sorry and my battery is dying. This beautiful young lady, I don't know who your name is, but let us know in the comments below says, can you make a video on how to tell if a boy likes you after they know that you like them? Teen edition, thanks. Okay, I might make an actual long video on this in the future, but the process of telling if someone likes you after they know that you like them is actually totally different because when people know that you like them, it gives them a lot more permission to actually flirt with you. So the signs have to be much more obvious for you to actually have the green light and go ahead. So if somebody knows that you like them and they're doing almost nothing to progress that relationship forward, then there's a good chance that they actually don't like you back because when someone knows that they like you, there's a huge chance that they are going to start approaching you and progressing that relationship forward because they don't have the same fear of being rejected that they did maybe before. That being said, you should still make it clear that you're interested in them. You can't like let them know that you like them and then just like ignore them forever. Like give them the opportunity to come forward and share their feelings with you as well. But if you know that they know that you like them and you aren't getting clear signals that they like you back, there's probably a good chance that this relationship is not going to happen. And that is because people who like you are just a lot braver with the information that you already like them back. Question number 10 is from Leslie M. She says, how do you deal with jealousy in a relationship, even in friendships? Guys, I've wanted to talk about jealousy on this channel for a long time because it's something that we all experience in varying degrees. And it can be, you know, it can be really tough to deal with jealousy when it comes up in your life. Jealousy can even take up a huge amount of our time and mental efforts when we could be focusing that energy on other more positive things. Right now I'm gonna focus on jealousy and friendship because that's where I see this happening the most is like being jealous of another girl in your group or your school because this is where I see this happening the most. Being jealous of another girl, you know, whether that be at school or in your group of friends or a dance class or whatever the case may be. I think the key to understanding jealousy is understanding like what feelings does that person bring out in you? Why does that jealousy come out? Are you insecure with yourself about something? Do you feel like that person is going to steal your thunder? What does that person threaten you? 
with? Like what did they take away from you? So for example, if you are in dance class and this amazing new dancer joins your class and she's getting all the teacher's praise and attention, does that make you feel jealous because you were the one receiving that praise and validation before and not getting that makes you feel a little bit insecure about yourself and your abilities? Or maybe there is somebody who you see as like really beautiful or attractive in your group of friends and that person makes you feel a little bit worse by comparison. Trust me guys, like we have all been there before when we're like, oh my God, I feel so ugly next to this person. Jealousy is almost like an amazing thing because it gives us a huge arrow and points to the thing that we need to work on most in ourselves. Oh my God, you guys, we're on our last question already. This is blowing my mind. I feel like this week's Q&A is so good. I'm sure next week's will be even better because you guys ask the best questions in the whole world. But question 11, this beautiful young lady here, this is like a major problem because so many of our questions come from Snapchat and I literally have no way of saving your name. I love you. Let me know who you are in the comments below. Says, hey Kimberly, I had a question about boys in general. Lately in school, boys have been starting to pay attention to me more and start competing for my attention. Is this normal? Should I be annoyed by this? I don't want to feel like a prize to be won. That's amazing. I mean, first of all, how how much of a compliment is it to you that people are actually competing for your attention and want to be noticed by you? I think like as humans, you know, to be appreciated and desired by other people is something that we always want and like always can feel mostly really, really good inside. So congratulations that you're in that position. But on the other side of things, it can also make you feel a little bit objectified and like you're just this thing and not even like people are really trying to get to know you, but they're just trying to win you. This is especially normal and common as you are growing up and going through adolescence because you are changing, your maturity is changing, and the people who are around you, like your peers, are also changing. They're going through hormonal changes. So that could lead them to want to compete for your attention just a little bit more than maybe they would have before. And yeah, that's something that I think gets increasingly common as you grow up. So I think the main thing here is to remember that yes, you are not a five sweet one. So just because somebody is competing for your attention, it doesn't mean that you ever have to even give the winner of that your attention. That's not really how it works. Who and what you give your attention to at any point in your life is 100% your decision and so nobody can compete and make you give your attention to them. This sounds like it is coming from boys but you may not be in a place where you like boys yet or maybe you're in a place where you don't like boys at all and that's totally, totally fine. So if this feels flattering to you, let it happen uh, but just know that there's no pressure to ever have to give attention to anyone who doesn't deserve it from you. Also you guys, I have a brand new PO box that I'm going to leave the address to down below so if you want to start submitting questions via mail, you could be featured in the next Ask Kimberly Q&A. Alright you guys, if you love this video, give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to write me at my new P.O. Box. I'm going to leave the address down below because you could be featured, your mail could be featured in the next Ask Kimberly video. Make sure you are following me on Instagram so that you don't miss the next Q&A. And obviously guys, subscribe to Ask Kimberly here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell for notifications. And I will see you guys next week, same time, same place, same everything for the next Ask Kimberly Q&A. I love you guys so much. Okay, I can't believe it's over. I'll see you later. Bye!